everybody today I'm going to show you how to um, edit some things in Gantry that you may not have seen before um, basically I'm going to um, edit some of the layouts so um, in Gantry themes you'll see there's layouts and you might think to yourself how do I add another section this is navigations, this is hero, sidebars, mains, prefers, footers all of these things can be added you might think to yourself how do I do it it's easy enough if you want to add a row you could keep doing that and you could keep adding columns sometimes you want to add another section purely for the reason that um, uh, you may want to have a different background color on each section for something like that or a background image so how do you do that so I'm going to show you that today so quite simply um, you go into your your FTP and your website you unfortunately need to get a bit into the code for this go into the templates folder I'm in Gantry 5 Hydrogen so I'll go in there it's always in the custom folder so you go into there and then in the config folder is where you'll find the stuff you're looking for and now you'll see um, a variety of folders you'll see some numbered ones and you'll see an error, an offline, body only and a default one I'll just show you what they mean so first of all the default one it's the base outline that's what you're editing in that one so if you need to add anything to your base outline that's, you do it in the default folder um, and then you can see at the bottom here we've got um, body only, error and offline so if I go back to my um, FTP you can see body, error, offline and default is the base as I just said now next thing is um, these other numbers 116, 117, 120 don't know what they mean necessarily so if you go into your outlines so it's in the top right in the menu there and you'll see that this one ID is default which gave me a clue as to where the folder was and this one's ID is 120 and this one's 116 and this one's 117 now what I do is I click on this pencil and I rename them and I put the number next to it because you don't want to be having to come into the screen every time so now when I go back here and I change to the contact page and it's 120 and I can see it so I know for a start that I can go in here and I can go into 120 and I'll be editing that particular YAML file so I can see three here index and assignments and layout layout's the one you want um, you can ignore the other two for now that's for another tutorial I'll edit it show you in my in my um, editor you can ignore most of the beginning part but what you will see is a part called layout and once you have a part called layout you'll see there's header and navigation so header's got these two brackets which are empty in between navigation the same and then you see header image it's got um, instead of uh, the normal layout it's got some slashes next to it and it's got some other stuff here and it's just got a colon and it hasn't got the brackets because it's got this stuff here and it's, it's saying there's system messages and it's got an ID and um, position position with an ID so let's have a quick look so we, we know we're on the contact page so we know in the right area um, so system messages is here as you can see and this one's got header image um, so we know this position must be the header image it doesn't have a name it's got an ID instead um, I don't really recommend you putting these things in yourself I recommend using Gantry for them however in order to create another position quite simply I could just do this and I can go um, header one that will solve the problem so you saw it was underlined in red because it can't be called the same thing so um, I'll call it edit one there we go um, so that's as easy uh, in fact I'll upload it so you can see what's going on there so I upload it and then I refresh and I now see header and header one I obviously don't want header and header one so um, I will delete header one and save it and upload it and again refresh it's gone away so that's how easy it is to build another um, section now I'm going to warn you about a few things and teach you a few things about YAML so first things first I'm going to stick a module instance in there so if we look quickly here we can see header it's got the two brackets and it's empty so as you can imagine if I now save this um, you would expect it to be different so but what I need to do first is refresh my FTP and now um, what I will do is actually close this YAML because it's now been updated here and it's not that obvious so if I discard my local and then I open that one header has now got a position in it 
And it's really easy for me to have accidentally downloaded this file. I open it here. I make my changes. I just remove the position to make it a simple change. Remember I have to put the brackets back in if I want to do that. So I'll do that. And then FTP is going to upload it. Now if I look here, module position has gone. OK, great. However, now I add in another module position here and I save it. And now we've got a problem. Because on my local one, I do not have that. And on my remote one, has changed. So if I upload my local one now, I will up update the uh, gantry. So if I now look here, I've got the module position. My local one doesn't have it. Right, so as an example now, I'll upload the local one because I forgot that I've done some changes. And um, here we go. Don't need that. Um, it's there and it's gone. So the message I'm giving to you here is you could end up doing a load of work here. Like I could be, I'll put in a module position, I'll put in another one. Let's get it the perfect size. I've resized it and then I've done this, that, the other. I've created a row and then I've had another module position. I've saved it. I've done all this work and I think it looks great. And suddenly I accidentally upload my local one. Everything will be gone because it's all controlled by this YAML file. You don't need to know what YAML means. It's just a configuration file and that's all you need to know. Um, what I tend to do is not download them at all, just in case I'm tempted to work on the local one, which I know will not be the same as the remote one. So if I am going to do that, I always download first. Um, but I normally work on the live one. In this case, normally I would download files to local and work there, but um, in this case I wouldn't. Um, I'll just talk you through a bit more about the stuff that's here. So when you get down to this side, you get to the structure. This is just telling you stuff like it's a section and blah blah blah. But um, it gives you some other stuff here, and there's sometimes some attributes. So this one, like boxed, is there for header image, and it's not there for navigation, right? So I'll show you what it does. If I go to the navigation, and oh, it's inheriting from the base. Let's go back to the base. I'll go to the navigation here, and the layout is. Oh, that's what the box is. So it must be in the default one anyway. Um, you can have full width boxed and whatever. In some cases, that just won't be there because it's not in the YAML. So, let's check and see if there is one. I think in this case we have done them all. Yeah, we have done them all. But trust me, you will come across one which doesn't have it. Oh, this one doesn't have it, but it's, it's off camera, it's slightly different. Um, yeah, okay, so they all seem to have it here. Trust me, as you go along, at some point, you will say, where enough is that layout option gone where I can make it boxed or flushed or whatever? Uh, and that's controlled by YAML. So if you can't find it, you need to go and get this attributes and box to uh, the, the numbers is like 0, 1, 2, which represents the drop down options that you see uh, here. So that would be like uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, or whatever. Um, anyway, you need to come find that somewhere in one of your other YAML files and copy and paste it. And I say copy and paste it because YAML can be a bit tricky. So. Um, Here's the content we're showing the module positions. I genuinely never edit this stuff. I just don't. I just don't need to. I just if I'm going to add module positions, I just think it's so much quicker. I just whack them all in the back here, and that's me done. I don't worry about it. Uh, there's no point in me doing it in code. It takes forever, and I can make mistakes. So let's go back to. Uh, let's just forget about those changes. Um, let's go back to the mistakes part of what I just said. So YAML works in a, a very very easy. Um, but a very simple way. So it's always two spaces. So you indent by two spaces. So this is indented by two, another two, another two. So if you ever have a problem with your YAML not working, that's the first thing to check. Have you indented them all by two spaces, four spaces, six spaces? You know, it's always by two. Um, and it's always indented. So layout, everything in layout would be two spaces ahead, or else it wouldn't really work. So now we know structure, two spaces ahead. Now we know that everything within two spaces is related to navigation, right? And now this goes back to the normal, so we know that's the case. Um, so very, very important to remember about the two spaces. YAML can be finickety, um, so get used to that idea that you would copy and paste rather than trying to do it yourself. But if you want to do it yourself, it's always a two space rule. Uh, and that is pretty much that. So just to refresh, we went into templates and then we went into G5 Hydrogen, our template name. 
We're always working in custom. We went into config and then we went to 120. Now if we wanted to change the baseline, we would be in default. Again, don't worry about anything except the layout. And you'll see this will change the default one if we need it. Uh, you can see here that there's a, a sidebar in this section. It's actually quite a bit different how you do a sidebar. Again, you start with the slashes and you indent. Then you need to do this bit, which is the sidebar with the, the width in it, so 30% and 70%. Um, if you need to work out how to do that, it's really easy to remember. Entry fire docs sidebar. Oh, look, there it is, comes up. I'll just Google it anyway so you guys can see. Um, go on here. I'll just search for sidebar. And it's there, so how to create a sidebar section. And as you see, there's an option here to copy and paste it. So if I was doing one from scratch, I'd probably just copy and paste that. This one adds two sidebars, which is not something I use too often, but you could use it on like a news site or something potentially. Um, anyway, that's how you would do that. Um, so there you have it. That's pretty much it for YAML. And um, I hope you find it useful when it comes to creating totally bespoke layouts using Gantry 5. I found it really useful when I found that out and um, yeah, if you do have any problems please comment on this video and we'll try to help you solve them. Thanks a lot for listening, if you do enjoy the videos please subscribe and uh, give us a comment to let us know you liked the video. Thanks, bye.